Howdy, welcome back to part two of the Weapons Masterclass series. In this video, I plan on helping you understand what weapons are needed for your build and which ones are completely useless to your build. If you missed part one, which broke down each weapon class for you, it will be linked in the description along with a spreadsheet that covers all that info if you feel like skipping the video. The point of this series is to teach newer and more casual players how to build on their own and understand how weapons can work together with their build. The first thing I want to talk about when it comes to weapons interacting with builds is how some builds can change the class of a weapon. The two examples of this I wanted to share are the Stasis Titan build you're seeing in the background along with Lucky Pants Hunter. The Stasis Titan build is interesting because it can take a weapon that is considered horrible, like this pulse rifle I got from Pantheon, and change it into a utility weapon. How? Let me break it down. Starting from the top, the main purpose of the build is to create and destroy a bunch of stasis crystals that clear adds. This means you don't need an ad clear weapon, and since the nature of the build is close range, you won't be needing a plink plonk weapon either. Now that we have crossed out two weapon classes to run in our build, what should we pick out of the remaining four? A major melting weapon should be a solid option, and a boss DPS weapon is probably good as well, since the stasis crystal spam doesn't exactly cover those two. Now this is where the options get a little interesting. Since stasis has a fragment called Whisper of Rending that states, primary ammo weapons do increase damage to stasis crystals and frozen targets. Now if you've been paying any attention to this section, you'd know that this build we're making creates a lot of stasis crystals, so this fragment will prove useful. Normally primary ammo weapons fall into ad clear, or niche, or plink plock weapon categories, with a few exceptions of course, but now we can put a primary into a heavy utility role. Pushing further into this, you could find it more useful to run a primary with higher ammo and a fast fire rate to provide maximum uptime to shatter the stasis crystals. If you want to take it even further, you can run Demo or Pugilist, or really both, on your stasis crystal breaking weapon to help you regen abilities faster. The short version of this is, weapons can shift their class or category if your build demands it. Another example of a build like this is Lucky Pants. Lucky Pants can shift a weapon that is either niche, or perhaps a plink plonk weapon, into a major melting or even a boss DPS weapon. Alright, I've got two builds in this section to talk about. The main focus will be on the Sunbracers build. More specifically, the good version of Sunbracers, with no Icarus dash and infinite resto times 2. The Sunbracers build is literally ad clear at its peak. Being able to clear massive groups of adds as well as hold down choke points better than Wither Horde, and some people still manage to run an ad clear weapon with it. I will admit there are a few situations in which running an exotic ad clear primary can be helpful, but those will rarely come up for the average player. Regardless, I plan on covering these situations in the next video. For now, I'm just going to explain why running, say, a Sunshot is a bad pairing with these Sunbracers. If it wasn't obvious, it's because both options are strong ad clear picks and frequently step on each other's toes in the majority of situations. The same goes with a forbearance for this build. Why kill all the ads with the weapon when your build is literally for clearing ads? Having the build clear ads does free up a slot though, so major melting, boss DPS, and utility weapons can all shine. Or if you feel like trading out that utility weapon for a support weapon, that works too. Something I'd like to add for the major melting portion of this build, should you choose to spec into it, is to not use recombination on the major melting weapon. Although it is good on 99% of all builds, especially with mountaintop dropping with it this season, it fails to shine in a build that is no energy weapon meant for clearing adds, like a Sunshot or a Gravelance or a Trinity Ghoul. And since a good Sunbracers build shouldn't be using those weapons, it effectively makes the recombination perk useless, on not just mountaintop, but all weapons that run with the perk. Another build that I wanted to talk about that is built for clearing adds without the need for an ad clear weapon is Arc Strider with its ability to infinitely chain jolting melees. This build is cool because it has your choice between Assassin's Cowl for health and infis on a melee kill or Liar's Handshake to deal extra melee damage. Regardless of which exotic armor piece you choose out of those two, an ad clear weapon is certainly not needed at all. A weapon that could be useful, however, is a one two punch shotgun since the playstyle that that perk is made for happens to be the premise of the entire Arc Strider build. The takeaway for this part is OP weapons can be useless in certain situations. Know when those situations are. Ooh. 
Every time I load into the tower, I like to go down the list of people in the tower with me and expect their loadouts. Nearly every time I do this, there is always the same lineup. Someone running double primary that isn't a PvP build, someone running quadruple ad clear, someone on just double ad clear, others with no ad clear at all. Because of this, in this section, I want to give you the blueprint for a good build so that you can still have the freedom of picking your own weapons and subclass while keeping your loadout balanced and not weighted towards one specific function. All right, a good passive build that will serve you well in 80 to 90% of all content contains the following. A way to stay alive, a way to clear adds, a way to deal with majors, and a way to do solid damage to boss enemies. That is really all you need. If you can fit all four of those things into your build and still have room, then you can add something that provides utility, like an Eager Edge Sword or a Blinding GL, or maybe support for your teammates, like a Tractor Cannon or a Lumina. This section sort of builds off the same philosophy as part two, albeit with a few changes. Let's say in this example that you have two weapons equipped, a pulse rifle in the kinetic slot with shoot to loot and a trace rifle in the energy slot, also with shoot to loot. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. Sometimes more is not better. Another example that I see from time to time is people putting really good damage perks on bad weapons for that perk. Every once in a while I'll inspect someone and I'll see them running an SMG with bait and switch or a GL or rocket with incandescent and I'll just die a little inside. If you would like me to, I suppose I could make a video classifying perks and sectioning them off like I did for weapons last video, if that would prove helpful. But I mean, dude, really? Bait and switch on a primary weapon? You do realize this means you have to use your heavy weapon to proc it. Another example of this I wanted to share comes from a commenter on the last video who said, Actually, a useful and compact and impactful video for my friend who thinks recon plus redirection commemoration is good for DPS. So much is wrong with using that machine gun for DPS, starting with the fact that it's a machine gun. And even if you had redirection at max stacks, that's only four shots of bonus damage. Unless the perk works differently on a machine gun, I've never tried because it's never come to mind, so I don't really know. Anyways, the takeaway for this section is, please realize that some perks aren't meant for some weapons. If you are unsure what the perk is good for, ask a friend or the internet for advice. That's all the advice I could come up with for this topic, but if I missed something or you were curious about something and I failed to mention it, please let me know in the comments. I read them all and will reply to any questions you may have. Next video, I plan on teaching you how to build for any activity, going through stuff like how class comfortability needs to be worked into team composition, and how to build around champions. All that being said, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next video.